Well, hello, welcome back, or welcome for the first time. My name is Sarah, and I am from SheHoldsDearly.com. Today, I really want to tackle some spring DIYs that have been in the back of my mind for some of them for years. We're going to look at three different, really great DIY decorations. One of them can be a table runner. It could be good for Easter dinner, or it could even be a runner on a mantle. That's how I'm going to show you how I use it. And then the other two are more garden related. And so you can use them on your porch. You could use them together. You could separate them. You could use them indoors. There's a lot of things you could do. And I really hope that these ideas have a longevity with you so you can continue to move them around each year in your home for springtime or remake them or gift them or something. So this should be fun. I am really excited about all of them. Now before I jump in though, I do not want to forget my behind the scenes group is open for just a few more days. And I know people get on that wait list and then I, I don't want them to miss that it is open if that's something you're interested in. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I call it my inner circle. And this is the group that I really get to know. Some of the girls have been in our group for like six years. And if you are looking for a, specifically a group of friends, a group of women who want to declutter their entire house in a year, they want to go through my Elite Decorating Academy, they want to learn more about the Lord and study the Bible together, they want to have me work on, personally work on their homes, and then other fun things like movie nights and shopping around the country, we do a lot of antiquing together, and fight human trafficking and several other things. I'm probably forgetting a few things, but that's a picture of my behind the scenes group in a nutshell. I've never seen a group like this. It's something that I really wanted for years to find for myself. And so I DIY'd it, I created it, and here we are and it's going strong. So you are invited to join. It's something I only open a few times a year so that we have some privacy and space to just get to know each other in between the openings. So this is our spring opening and I'll put the link in the description below. I've always struggled to find a group of women who really understood me and instantly understood why I do what I do, why I love this, why it is so important to me and it's been not an easy thing to find. So behind the scenes is that group, if that's something you're looking for. I hope to see you in class. All right, and without further ado, let's jump in with our first project. I want to DIY a lavender topiary. I first saw lavender topiaries in Costco, and they are gorgeous. They were, I think I spent $15 on this absolutely stunning lavender topiary if they might actually be in Costco right now but the problem is they don't last mine did not last and I've tried like several years in a row I want to style it on my porch which doesn't get enough sunlight so then I styled it out in my garden and it still didn't make it so I'm just gonna have to make a faux one and <sighs> I've got some ideas so here we go let's try it I'm starting with a foam floral ball like this and I got this at Hobby Lobby for $6.49. This is a 5.6 inch ball and I think this will be good. I mean it's going to get about twice this size once we add in our lavender. Next we're going to prepare our lavender stems. These are $1.99 picks from Hobby Lobby and I got 26 of them. I didn't get them on sale. I think you could do better than me. You can get them 40 or 50% off. I would say that in the next week or two, they will go on sale again because I think Hobby Lobby rotates their sales about every three weeks. So you could do that and that would save some money too, but I'm not sure if I need 26. We will find out and I'll just tell you here at the end. We're gonna take all the tags off. I still feel like they are a little bit too bright. So we're gonna deal with that. I do feel like these leaves are really accurate. In fact, I just went out to my garden and compared them to my lavender. And I feel like these are really accurate. So this is gonna be the bulk of the topiary. Whatever you use, you don't have to use these. 
but I would make sure that they are wired. So we have a little bit of wire in there because we need to shape it. We're not just gonna make this ball that looks like it has spikes sticking out all over. It actually needs to all be shaped upwards like it's towards the sun. Okay, so we're gonna take off all our tags and then I actually feel like these are also too bright. Actually, all of it's too bright. So we're gonna not use these, I don't think. We're gonna pull all of these off, they just pop off. And then I'm actually gonna spray paint these. I'll show you my favorite spray paint. I know it's so controversial. People are really annoyed with me that I spray paint faux plants. But I found a green that I actually just keep on hand as a staple. And anytime I feel like I have a faux plant that is too bright or too vibrant, I'll just give it a shot with this. It's called Eden, it's a rust -Oleum spray paint. So we're gonna do that. I just did a light dusting on the greenery just to give it some variegation. I don't think you need to saturate it. Don't overthink it. Just do a light dusting to give some variety. It's gonna look like this when it's dry. And then the other thing I would suggest is to spray your foam ball. And I'm actually gonna cut it off about right here. I'm just gonna take a serrated knife and cut it and so it's gonna sit flat it's gonna make more sense here when we put when we start putting all the greenery on but cut about let's see maybe like an inch and a half in from one edge cut it flat put these about every inch it actually is gonna take all the ones that I have so that's okay we're gonna space these about an inch apart and I'm going to need about six on top. I'm actually gonna use all the ones I bought, which I'm a little bummed about, but okay, whatever. If I would've got them on sale, I would feel better about the price of this. But okay, so six on top and then 18 around the sides. And the ones around the sides, we're actually gonna bend so they're pointing up because that is how a lavender topiary works. And I'm sinking these all the way down to the right where the leaves start. Next, you're gonna take this lavender. I got this at Hobby Lobby, number 413690. And I felt like the buds were really authentic looking. So I'm gonna take wire cutters and I'm gonna cut just the buds off and then I'm gonna stick them in randomly throughout this topiary that we've got going. Lastly, I'm going to hot glue this onto a stick that I found in my yard. I'm going to put it in a pot with dirt, or you could do more floral foam in your pot, or I have a basket here. And then I'm going to add moss to cover up the dirt portion. Next step, what I wanna make is something that looks like this. This is a very small example. This is a bust planter, very popular and very expensive. This one was, I think, $30, and I would like a bigger one, but they run about $80, so I'm gonna try to make one. I know this is gonna look a little weird, but I got one of these foam wig stands. It was just a few dollars, and then my thought is, that I could use this clay and do her hair and some leaves. And then, now if you were just gonna do faux plants, you literally could just use this like floral foam and fill out the plant area. I have this $1 plant that I got at a garage sale. And so I am gonna cut away some of the foam and put that in there. 
And then the last thing would be that I need to figure out the coloring of the different paints to get a faux look. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is figure out the plant part. And I'm positioning the plant on top because that's the kind of the way I've seen them. And you feel like you wanna put it in the back, but planters seem, seems like they put them on top. So I'm just gonna trace off the section that I want. My family thinks I'm a psycho. Uh, they might be right. But this is the first step. We got the plant in there and I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna cover her with my clay because it's clay wet. And I'm just gonna put a really thin layer over the whole head. And then we're gonna start working on her hair and the leaves. It's drying and it's totally flaking off. I mean, it's just not, it's just not working. So actually I'm kind of glad, look at that. I'm kind of glad because it was taking a really long time. So I found this old chalk paint, like it's a full, look how thick that is. I could, I could water that down, but I actually like how thick it is because it works into the little crevices of the foam. It's the Magnolia style chalk paint called Antiquing. And I mean, I could have this thing painted in about 60 seconds. So that's what we're gonna do next. I'm actually gonna flake off all that I can of the clay, paint it, and then I really wanna get to work shaping the rest of it with clay. I let her dry overnight and there were some cracks, of course, in the hair and the leaves, the laurel leaves. And so I'm patching it with this air dry clay that I found at Hobby Lobby. It's called Nara Nara. 
and I feel like that is good for the patching. Once that dries, then I'm gonna then I'm gonna give it another coat of the gray paint from Magnolia, and I think we'll be done. We could add a little bit of texture with some furniture wax, but actually I I don't think it I have to do it. I think it does look good. There, I feel like there's enough variation with the colors actually with what we've done already. I first did this table runner idea for my daughter when we did a Pride and Prejudice party and I used book pages. I feel like I used about 200 pages for 12 feet of table so that will give you some context. This is an old hymnal that is coming apart so I'm actually going to use hymnal pages for this. And for your horizontal surface you don't have to do anything. If you're not dealing with any wind, you know, you're inside, you can just quickly stagger these around flat on the table and I kind of fan them out I spin them different ways you can get it as thick as you want but you're just going to cover the horizontal surface with individual sheets of paper then off the ends and this is my favorite part we're going to hot glue them together in the same sort of haphazard pad pattern that we have going on on the horizontal surface we're going to hot glue some sections together and let them spill over either end. Or you could just do one end because the asymmetrical is so beautiful. But anyway, we're just gonna quickly put this together. I thought this would be so great for maybe Easter or a table runner for a situation where you don't, you know, you don't wanna spend a ton of money. Something like that could be good. It's definitely a conversation starter and it's very easy. If it starts to get too heavy, tape down these pages on the end. See, I'm starting to get too heavy. I get a little tape because I really want more of a, an overflow on this one side.
All right, we made it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And let me know in the comments below which item you liked the most, which item you plan to make, and if you have any other suggestions, I'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you're interested in joining my coaching group called Behind the Scenes, you have a few more days to join us. Take part in my weekly classes. And if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button so I can send you more videos on how to make interior design easy and turn your home into a sanctuary. All right, take care, and I will talk to you next week.